Just remain standing this morning, and I'm going to ask the guys to go ahead and pull up the message, and there it is. And I want you to turn to Psalm 18 and verse 29, Psalm 18 and verse 29, for the word this morning. This psalm actually has an introduction to it. And you may, and uh, Brother David, if we can pull that introduction up, because I want to read that. Because if you go to your Bible, this is one of the few psalms that has an introduction to it. So David, give me a thumbs up when you got it, my brother. Amen. But what a joy it was to have Sister April here this morning. Amen. Oh, thank the Lord for that ministry. And how many of you wanted to come back soon? Amen. Praise God. Amen. And don't forget to pick up those CDs uh, uh, when they go by this morning. So if you have your Bible, Psalm 18 and verse 29, and if you actually have your Bible, I want to read the introduction because I want to lay it out before you this morning. This psalm actually says, To the chief musician, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spake unto the Lord the words of this song, On the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. Now I want us to go to verse 29 for the verse this morning. I want to give you one verse of scripture in this message today. And if you want to read it out loud with me, that would be great. Everybody ready? Read. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God I have leaped over a wall. And I want to speak to you this morning on the thought you can get over it. You can get over it. I want you to tell somebody that this morning. You can get over it. Father, thank you for the reading of your word. Thank you for the worship. Thank you for the music. Anoint your servant to preach the word of God this morning. May I decrease, may you increase. May this word and the music before it be exactly what is needed for someone here today. And we'll praise you for it. And everybody said amen. Amen. One more time, give the Lord a hand of praise this morning. He's worthy of all the praise. Amen. (laughs) Praise God. Praise God. You can get over it. Now, I want you to notice in Psalm 18, 29, that really he's saying two things. He's saying, I have. Go back to verse 29. I have. Say that with me. I have. In other words, it's in the past. Something has already been accomplished. It was a done deal. He said, I have run through a troop. That's the first thing. And the second thing is, I have leaped over a wall. Have you ever heard anybody make this statement, I just can't get over it? Have you ever heard anybody say that? Have you ever heard anybody say, I'll never get over this? Have you ever heard anybody say, there's no way I can get over this? But I want to tell you that you can get over it. You see, David wrote this psalm, and as we read the introduction, this was a time when God had given him peace and rest from his enemies and from Saul. I don't have time to go through it, but you remember how after David was anointed with that oil, Saul the king turned on him and began to hunt him like a dog. And even tried to annihilate him. But at the writing of this psalm, David was celebrating a time of rest and peace. Sort of like what Proverbs 16 and verse 7 says. Proverbs 16 and verse 7 says, When a man's ways please the Lord, what does it say? He makes even his what? His enemies to be at peace. And now David was reflecting And David was thinking and David was remembering how he came close to losing it all when he makes this two powerful statements. He says, through God I have run through a troop. Say that with me. Run through a troop. See, this is like military maneuvers. In other words, it wasn't just a straight line. I went through a troop. I I, I had to cut to the left at certain times. And then I had to swing back to the right. And maybe I had to pivot over here and turn over there. But at the end of the day, praise God, 
David said, I got through it. Oh, can you lift your hand this morning and say, I got through it, praise God. I got through it. Uh, through it all, uh, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Uh, through it all, uh, I've learned to trust in God. Uh, through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Can we celebrate uh, that with God I've gotten through it? Uh, give him a hand of praise uh, that he's brought you through it. But listen. That's not all he said. I not only ran through a troop, he said, but I also leaped over a wall. David is praising God and thanking God that he has brought him through, but not only that he's brought him through, but that he's gotten over it. Thank God he gets us through it. But I want you to know, and this is the crux of the message this morning, that many people have gotten through some things that yet have not gotten over some things. I said this is two things. This is heads and tails. This is one coin. And you, you can't have one without the other. Amen. I want to ask you this morning, not have you got through it, but I also want to ask, have you gotten? Because it's two separate things. You see, you may have gotten over that failure. You may have gotten over uh, that bankruptcy or that divorce or that hurt. Uh, but you have gotten through it. But I ask you, have you really gotten over it? You may have come through it, but have you gotten over it? So it reminds me of this, this man who was walking on the edge of the cliff and he fell over. And about a third of the way as he's fallen down uh, the cliff, he grabbed a vine that was growing out of the side of the rock and he was hanging there dangling thousands of feet from certain death. And he began to cry out, help, help, help. Uh, and all of a sudden, a deep voice was heard out of heaven and said, my son, I will help you. The man said, oh, dear God, as he's dangling there. Oh, I'm so glad to hear your voice. I'm so grateful that you will help me. Please get me out of this predicament. God said this. He said, I will if you do exactly what I ask you to do. The man said, oh, God, I'll do anything that you ask me. Just get me out of this mess. So God said, let go of the vine. The man said, what? God said, let go of the vine. The man's hanging and he said, oh, you've got to be kidding. God said, no, I'm not kidding. If you want me to save you, let go of that vine. The man went into deep thought for a moment. And then he said these words. Is there anybody else out there? <laughs> it's hard to let go of some things, isn't it? It's one thing to get through, it's another thing to get over. And if you're still hanging on to stuff, if you're still thinking about it over and over, if you're still crying and crying and crying over it, if you're still regretting over it, if you're still ashamed over it, then you've not gotten over it. I want to tell you that you can get through it and God wants you to get over it no matter what it is, no matter how powerful it is, no matter how hurtful, no matter how painful, no matter how deep, no matter how wide, no matter how high, you just start running because by the authority of God's word, you can leap over a wall. You can get over it, through it. Don't let hang on to it. Get over it this morning. Give him a hand of praise that you're going to leap over a wall. David had to learn to get over four major obstacles in his life. And I believe these are similar obstacles that we all face. Number one, he had to overcome family obstacles. Oh, mama drama, here we go. Family, crazy, cousins, uh, uh, I'm telling you, he had family drama to the nth degree. Now, I'm not going to ask any questions this morning. I don't want to embarrass anybody because some of your family might be here this morning. But I would venture to say that we've all had some family obstacles. Think about when David or when Samuel was going to anoint the next king of Israel. And he said, Jesse, David's father's name was Jesse. His, Samuel said to Jesse, Jesse. God's told me one of your sons is going to be the next king. I want you to line them up 
And I'm going to anoint the next king from one of your children. And boy, can you imagine how excited the Jesse household was. Can you imagine those brothers sitting around before saying, oh, I wonder if it's going to be me. No, sir, it's going to be me. Oh, it certainly is me. Can you imagine those guys bragging at each other? And boy, when Samuel comes, uh, they're lined up out there. All, uh, not, not all, but seven of them are lined up. Uh, and I'm telling you, the oldest, Eliab, was there. And everybody thought, surely, and I could see the prophet Samuel. And, and he looks there, and he looks up and down over Lab and he says, nope. Then he goes to the second one, not you. Then he goes to the third, mm -mm. he goes to the fourth, no sir. He goes to the fifth, he goes to the sixth, goes to the seventh, none of them. And guess who was not invited? He wasn't even invited. His family, his brothers had completely left him out. Now, friend, I know what it's like to have a good family. Thank God my mother is here many Sundays. She couldn't be here today, and my sister. I know what it's like to have my mother and father support me, my wife to support me. I know what it's like to have family support me. But I tell you, it's got to be a terrible thing when you have family members, people that that's supposed to love you, people that are supposed to be there for you, people that are supposed to encourage you the most. It's a bad thing when they reject you, when they look down on you, when they don't include you. And I want you to know that that Samuel looked back and said, Come on, is there any more? And Jesse said, Well, yeah. We got one more. And Samuel said, I tell you, I'm not going anywhere till you bring him, find him. So they found David. Uh, and right there in front of all, I'm about to shout, right there in front of all seven of those rejecting brothers, uh, Samuel pours out that anointing oil. Uh, my friend, you can get through it. Uh, and praise God, you can get over family obstacles. Uh, can you give him a hand of praise here this morning? Psalm 27 and verse 10, uh, David later on said, uh, listen, uh, my father and my mother, they may forsake me, uh, but the Lord will take me up. Uh, later on in his life, his own son rejected him. Later on, his own wife, Michael, uh, criticized him. But friend, uh, if families don't stand for you, let me tell you something. you got a family right here at Westmoreland. Amen. Uh, praise God. You're part of the family of God, uh, and I am accepted. Uh, say that with me. I am accepted in the beloved Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 6 I am part of the family oh we are family I got all my sisters with me come on everybody get up and sing we're part of the family of God you may have had a bad divorce you may have had abusive parents isn't it terrible that children are abused by the ones who love them. Darnell and I have never been able to have children. We've been trying to get Grace Ann for many years now. I can have her now. Well, come on, Grace. Amen. But I can only imagine parents not being abusive to their children. Maybe you parents have had children that wronged you. Isn't that something? You raise a child. Uh, you provide for them. Uh, you send them to school. Uh, you pay for their clothes. Their And then it, when they're adults uh, and your roof is leaking uh, or there's a problem with the plumbing uh, uh, and they can fix it and you know they can fix it, when you call them, all you get is voicemail. You raised him up to be Billy Graham and he turned out to be Willie Nelson. I know. <laughs> God understand <laughs> crazy <laughs> y'all know what I'm talking about don't you crazy listen you can get over it when people reject when family rejects you you have a family and I'm so glad to be a part of the family I'm a brother and I still like saying brother Philip and, and sister April I, I like we are brothers and sisters we are family thank God you can get over family obstacles uh, give him a hand of praise the Lord will heal those wounds you can get over family obstacles. And then number two, he had to face a foe obstacle. What do you mean by that? Because not long after David is anointed, he's facing a, a giant. He's facing an enemy. 
And you think, well, when I get saved, oh, it's going to be glory by and by. It will be in glory by and by. But I'm here to tell you, you've got to go to work. You've got to meet this world. You're going to have a foe. You've got an enemy called Satan. And, and you've got an obstacle. People think, well, uh, when they first get saved, they're like, well, uh, I, I, shouldn't have, uh, I shouldn't have had this uh, attack or I shouldn't have been fighting this temptation. I must not be saved. No, listen to me. The minute you get saved, you are going to have a foe. You're going to have an enemy. And David fought a foe. In fact, uh, you remember the story. I don't have time to get into it. But David was told to go down to check on his brothers. They were fighting in the Israeli army. And the Israeli army really wasn't fighting. They were in fear. They were paralyzed. Because the enemy, the Philistines, had this big giant. His name was Goliath. And Goliath was very tall and very large, Andre the Giant size. I mean, he was a, he was a big guy. I was thinking about Jan standing up here, and, and I know that some of you probably remember Jan, not from church, but probably some of you remember that, remember that time you got a speeding ticket around Greenville? That was Jan, okay? He was a, he was a state trooper, so just, you know, he, so if you think he's familiar, then hopefully your points have gone down by now, because it's been a while he's retired. But, but listen. Listen to me this morning, a big guy, Goliath, and, and David goes down there, and they're all afraid, and David said, wait a minute, guys, I remember when I had to face a bear, and I got through it, <laughs> and then not only a bear, a lion came, and guys, I was just shepherding a flock. But I love my flock, and I won't let no devil, no lion, no bear get my flock. And when that lion, I, with my own hands, I ripped that lion to, that lion to shred, and I got through it. And this guy over here, let me tell you something. I serve the same God that got me through the lion and through the bear. And I'll tell you, this giant is bigger than anything I've ever seen, bigger than anything you've ever seen. But I'm here to tell you, by my God, I'm going to run through a troop. And by my God, you're about to see me leap over a wall. Hallelujah. And you remember the story, old David, praise God, in 1 Samuel 17 and 45. David, in fact, I like this. Uh, David said to the Philistine, uh, uh, or he said to, I, I like, you know what? I, I could hear what old David said. He was saying, let me at him. Let me at him. And they're like, no, David, you can't face that obstacle. You can't face that foe. David said, uh, look, Psalm, uh, 1 Samuel 17, uh, Then David said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and a spear and with a shield, uh, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of, the, of Israel, whom you have defiled. Uh, and I don't know what giants you are facing. It could be the giant of a diagnosis. It uh, could be the giant of debt. Uh, it could be the giant of a detour going away that you hadn't planned. It could be the giant of discouragement But I'm here to declare in the Holy Ghost uh, Giants are coming down uh, at Westmoreland uh, Giants are coming down in your life uh, And you're going to get over it <laughs> Lift your hand up and say I'm going to get over it It's not by might nor by power and I love this. I read this this morning. Uh, how many of you know there's scriptures that we read and we kind of know them? Uh, and, and every now and then we need to refresh ourselves uh, in a scripture. But I love 1 John 4 and 4. 1 John 4 and 4. You are of God little children and have overcome them. <laughs> there's that word over. You got it? Uh, because, read it with me. Greater is he than he that is in the world. Uh, and I want you to know David overcame uh, that obstacle. You remember when Adam Fulgham preached here uh, a few years ago? You know, he's very young. And, and uh, he, he said that David got on top of that giant, cut his head off, and looked down and said, See, I told you so. <laughs> Come on, give the Lord a praise. I, I said, You can get over that giant. You can get over it. I said you can get over it, not just through it, not just hanging on to it. Not a sh you can get over it. Not only did he have a family obstacle and a foe obstacle, sometimes it gets worse. The last two are probably worse. You, would, you wouldn't think so, but it is. He had number three, a friend obstacle. This is sort of similar to family. And I've had, I've had some in my family that... that 
maybe one or two that gave me a hard time. But I'll tell you what, what's worse than family turning on you is a friend. Has anybody, don't raise your hand because your friend might be here, <laughs> had, a friend, <laughs> had a friend to turn on you? Somebody you fellowship with, talk with, told, poured your heart out to, and, and then they turned on you. How many of you, that's an obstacle? And it hurts. And, and you know the story in, in, in 1 Samuel 30. You see, David had about 600 friends or 600 men. And boy, they went around the countryside. They were, uh, somebody said they were b -b -b bad to the bone. Amen. <laughs> I won't explain that. But <laughs> they were bad to the bone. I'm telling you, these guys were, were they were whipping up on some devils. And, and they were having a blessed time. And God was blessing them. These were the future leaders of David's kingdom. Uh, they were king, kings and priests in training. Uh, uh, soldiers in training for the future kingdom. In fact, that's really what we all are. We're all Jesus. He's our David. Uh, and we're in the wilderness. And we're training for that kingdom to come. Can you say Hallelujah. But let me tell you something, they came to Ziklag, and, and they had been had victory after victory until when they got to Ziklag, all of a sudden things changed. And instead of another victory, Ziklag was a heap of fire, it was nothing but fire. Ziklag is the name of the city, for some of you are not familiar with the story. Ziklag, sort of like Sims and Bailey, Ziklag, okay? And, uh, and, uh, it, and all it was was smoke and ashes. And the Bible says that those 600 men and David, they cried because all of their wives and children had been taken away by the enemy. And by the way, that's what the devil wants to do. He wants to steal our families and divide our families. Oh, but listen, you'd have thought out of 600 people that at least one of them would have said, David, man, this is tough, but we're going to get through this. But friend, I'm telling you, all 600 of them, his friends, people who are supposed to be there for you in a tough time. Y'all with me? All of them. The Bible says they talked about not only turning against him, but they talked about stoning him. Man, can you imagine? I've been good to you 600 guys. I've helped you 600 guys. You mean to tell me you're getting ready to snuff me out because things aren't going right? Oh, my friend, look at Psalm 41 and 9. Sometimes our own familiar friend in whom we trust and we did eat bread, they have lifted up their heel against me. And there's going to come times in your life when friends that you confide in, friends that you love, friends that you help, they may not only distance themselves from you they may actually turn and be uh, adversarial to you uh, and how in the world do you get over a friend obstacle first of all you need to choose your friends wisely can I say say amen be careful who you bear your soul to. Uh, be careful, teens, uh, who you're hook, hooking around with and hooking up with and Facebooking and friend uh, Instagram and all that. Be careful who you're friend. Be selective uh, on. Uh, don't just uh, be, be around godly people, people that you can trust. And even, and by the way, I can tell you, sometimes my friends have been in church uh, and they have turned uh, against me. Come on, don't look at me like that. Uh, we've been there, done that. We all understand. How do you get over it? Let me tell you how David got over it. First Samuel chapter 30. And verse 6, just give me a thumbs up when you got it. It says, David encouraged, listen, David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of the people was grieved, every man for his sons and daughters. But David, what did he do? He encouraged himself in the Lord. I said, David encouraged, listen, when, if you're going to get over this stuff, you got to preach to yourself. When that sword comes in and hurts, uh, you got to take that sword out uh, and say, by his stripes I am healed. Uh, and listen, if all my friends forsake me, if all my family forsakes me, uh, I have a friend uh, that sticketh closer than a brother. And I promise you, uh, you can get over the friend obstacle. Uh, I don't care how bad it hurts. Come on, give him a hand of praise. Amen. He encouraged himself in the Lord. Let me tell you, we listen to preaching sometimes. Every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, online, apps, DVR, all of that, we listen to sermons. Can I tell you something? The greatest sermon you'll ever hear 
is a sermon that you preach to yourself. David said, bless the Lord, O my soul. He didn't say, he didn't say my soul, bless the Lord. He said, O my soul, bless the Lord. Amen. Come on. Bless the Lord, O my soul. In other words, I'm trying to make the point. He told his soul, uh, you may not feel like it. Uh, he told his body, you may have aches. Uh, he told his heart, you may be wounded. Uh, but he said, bless the Lord. Uh, God is good all the time, uh, and all the time God is good. Uh, if I lose a friend, uh, although I've been a good friend, and I lose them, and they turn on me, God will send me more friends. Uh, bec- and if nothing else, uh, he is the friend uh, that will stick with me through thick and thin. I can get over friend hurts. Can you say amen? Come on, just wave by. Sometimes you got to have the gift of goodbye. You just got to say, see you later. The Lord watch between you and me. We are moving on in Jesus' name. Y'all act like y'all ain't never had a friend do anything to you. He faced a family obstacle, but he got over it. He faced a foe obstacle, but he got over it. He faced a friend obstacle. He got over it. And the last obstacle he faced was a failure obstacle. Now, you might not have had any family problems. (laughs) I don't know why I'm thinking about the Adams family when I think of family problems. (laughs) You might not have had a foe problem, but you will. You're either walking in uh, collision with the devil or in collusion. Uh, there's some of these saints that have never had a never had a sleepless night. Some saints that have never had a problem and no worry in the world. Uh, and it's not because they have great faith in God. It's because they're not doing a thing to fight the devil. Amen. The minute you step up and put on your battle gear like our pastor's been preaching on on the armor of God, you're going to be in collusion with the devil. Friend, I'm here to tell you it is a fight. We're not going to lay down our weapons until we get over to, on heaven's shore. But as long as we're here, we need to be ready to fight the good fight of faith. we got to fight our feelings. we got to fight our sometimes adversaries, sometimes thoughts that come into our mind. The greatest obstacle is my own self. But let me tell you something. I am free in the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ, and I'm going to get over it, amen, and failure, and boy, didn't David fail, wow, I thought about, you know, the big, tall, strong giant didn't bring him down, but that five-foot blonde did, <laughs> you'll, th- you'll think, of, you'll get that later on today, <laughs> well, I'm strong in God, and I'm anointed, and I've got the oil, you might run against a five-foot blonde, and you, <laughs> It was the devil of sin, you know, and it doesn't mean I'm a woman. You, you ladies, I'm talking about a big strapping guy. He might could, you know, bring, you know, I'm here to tell you, we all have temptations. I don't care how saying, you, well, I'm a mother in the church. Well, I've seen mothers in the church fail. Amen. We all can fail. Have you ever failed? And you felt so bad about it, so guilty. And what makes it worse is somebody knows that you fail, and when you see them at Walmart, they, they kind of got that look in the eye. I know what you did back in 1973. I remember. Or even worse, you come to church, and somebody's sitting on the, another pew over there, and, and you're just praising God, and all of a sudden you catch their eyes looking at you, and you're like, Pfft. self-righteous, holier than thou, Looking down their sanctified, crankified noses because you messed up. Well, let me tell you something. David messed up. He committed adultery. I said he committed adultery. He was married to a woman, and he had relations with another woman. Can I tell you today, ladies and gentlemen, that adultery is a sin. We glorify it on Hollywood movies, and we find ourselves in temptation And I encourage you, if you're a married man, that you keep your marriage vows. Well, my wife may not look as pretty as she did. Have you looked in the mirror lately? (laughs) Do you know what she's got to look at? And I'm going to tell you, brother, the grass is greener on the other side. Ain't that what they say? But you know what makes the grass so green? It's fertilizer. Just remember that. Amen. Amen. You better stay. Listen, uh, be faithful to your marriage vows. Young people need to see the example of how I hate people running down marriage. I hate people talking about how bad marriage is what you make it in the name of the Lord. 
If you've, got, if you've got the joy of the Lord and you're happy in the Lord, I promise you that's going to help in your marriage. Uh, now, I'm not telling you that we've got to adjust and struggle and humble ourselves and get through the challenges, uh, but when at the end of the day, I've got a happy marriage because I choose to have a happy marriage. Uh, I love my wife, and I don't want to fail, uh, and I want to keep those covenants and those commitments. Uh, and when, and, and you got to remember, one day you're going to be sick, uh, and you might not be able to get up and use the restroom, uh, and you'll be thankful that you stayed with a woman, uh, or you may be thankful that you you stay with a man that can help you when you can't help you. That's what marriage is all about. It ain't all about the thrill and the looks. It's about the blessings of a lifetime. Thank God for marriage. I love it. It's wonderful. Well, Brother Ricky, you've got a good marriage. I don't. Well, you can as well. I'm just, we, y'all with me this morning? He failed. He failed. You know how he got over it? Let me, I'm going to close with this. He got over his failures. Look at Psalm 51 in verse 3, and I'm about to come to a close. And Brother Clark, if you want to come on up, and let's pretend that I'm closing, okay? <laughs> let's make believe. Amen. Thank you. And I'll let you know when to start. Did you enjoy Sister April this morning? She doesn't just sing. She ministers. She preaches through her singing. And she speaks, but I'll tell you, she just... Uh, every song in the ministry of that song went right along with this message today. She didn't know what I was going to preach. I, she might have saw the sermon title on Facebook. But let me tell you how David got over failure. Psalm 51 and verse 3. For I acknowledge my transgressions. My sin is... He didn't play the blame game. And a lot of people, when they mess up, they want to blame everybody. Well, I committed adultery because my wife didn't do this, what, and the other. No, because you got a sinful heart. You're not going to stand before God and your wife's going to be there. And God, uh, uh-uh. It's like uh, Adam said, well, she made me eat the fruit. You know, my wife gave it to me. No, no, we don't need to play the blame game. Well, the, I didn't get my Obama phone, you know. I didn't get some check or I didn't do this or I didn't do th- Or if, if she hadn't have been taking a shower in the open, then I wouldn't have committed adultery and murder. Uh, that ain't what he said. He said, I'm the one that sinned. I could have turned my head. I could have sent a soldier down there to let her know that she was exposed and been a man to her and a covering to her. But instead, I, I feasted on that which I should, was, did not belong to me. I failed. I sinned. Is there not anyone? We've all sinned and fell short of the glory of God. We've got things in our past. And I'm going to tell you, some of you have yet to get over that. You keep thinking about oh if I just hadn't have done that oh how I've messed up there oh how you know what's the problem you've gotten through it but you have not gotten over it you are still hanging on and saying is there anybody else out there the word of the Lord today is uh, do not look behind Uh, if God has forgiven then you forget it Uh, I want you to know he is the God uh, of pardon and mercy and he wipes away our sins Uh, he took them on the cross uh, and thank God uh, not just to deal with it and go through it uh, but to praise God to get over it uh, over my failures Uh, give him a hand of praise uh, that you gotten over your failures <laughs> hallelujah no skeletons in my closet look at first john 2 and 1 it says my little children these things i write unto you that you sin not but if any man sin we have an advocate that's opposite of the criticizer you know what an advocate do you know what that means it means an attorney don't you these commercials on tv These men come up, do you need help with your bills? (laughs) I mean, (laughs) talk to somebody who means business. At at Nelms and Pearson and Pearson. (laughs) We (laughs) have you been in an accident? (laughs) Has your fender been bent three millimeters? You're entitled, you know, I'm playing facetious. You're entitled to all of the money in the world. And I mean, these guys mean let me tell you something, an advocate. Jesus, he means business. He looks at his client and says, did you do it? Yes, Jesus, I did. Do you repent over it? Oh, God, I do, and I continue to do. Enough said. Let's go to the courtroom, and you don't say a word. Your Honor, he's free. Hallelujah. That's getting over it. Hallelujah. I have an advocate. 
with the Father. Quit worrying about sister so-and-so and the long faces and the long tongues. Quit worrying about what somebody tweeted or posted on Facebook. Look what he's already posted in the Word of God. I can get through it and I'm over the sin. I'm over the failure. I'm not the same person. Rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Micah 7 and 19, would you stand with me? If y'all don't stand, I'm going to keep on going. Hallelujah. We'll never get over this sermon today. Micah 7 and 19, just play it softly. You know what I'm talking about. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities. He will cast our sins. Where? Not into the lake. You know, they can drain a lake, not to the pond, but out, out, out. You know, the further you go out, the deeper the water is. Isn't that great? You know, you've know, you got to take the Scripture and think of these things. And not just into the sea, but into the... Do you know how long it took them to find the Titanic? It took them almost 100 years. And boy, they had to spend millions and millions and millions of dollars. They had to get high-tech equipment. They had to risk their lives to go down about three miles. And there was no light down there. And I'm going to tell you what your sins, buddy, they're down there. And you better not get on the light and go looking for my sins. Dude, God's going to cut your oxygen off. And you're going to lose your joy. Thank God I've gotten over my past. I'm telling you, I've been through church. I'm preaching this sermon to myself this morning because I'm going to tell you, I've been through some stuff. And my wife's been through some stuff. And you've been through some stuff. And the other day, I was, I was thinking about, man, the mistakes I've made. And I wish I could have done this. Wish I could have done that. And the Lord just sent this message along and said, yeah, you've run through the troop. But now it's time to not just get over the wall. But he said, leap over the wall. Can you say leap over the wall? I want you to lift your hands up and say, by my God. I'm running through a troop, and I'm leaping over a wall. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray this morning, as your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, you may have had some family that have turned on you. You may have had some friends that have blocked you off Facebook. You may be facing the big foe of a medical diagnosis. Or you may have a failure in the past that you keep hanging on to. This morning, the invitation is very simple. Do you want to get over it and stay over it? Wave goodbye to it. It's in the depth of the sea. Would you step out of your seat? I want all of us to come. I think we all need to get over some things. So step out of your seat. And if you want to be saved, you come as well. Amazing grace. I'm getting over it this morning. How sweet the sound oh, that saved a rich oh, like me. Come on down this morning. I want I'm getting over it. The past is over. I found was blind. But now. Oh, take your failures. Take your mistakes. Let God cast them. Twas grace. 